But, so yeah, a lot has happened since uh, since we posted our pregnancy announcement and we wanted to take time to just sit down and speak with you guys. And we wrote down some notes so we don't get too far off track. So if we're looking down at the notes, just that we don't wanna um, get off track. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess you guys should understand, well, we should let you know that our videos aren't always like, we film it today and we post it tomorrow. Like that's not how it works. Right, we may um, have videos in queue in for queue quite a while. For a, yeah, yeah, quite a while. So things, things are happening before you guys even see them. Yeah. Unless of course you're dealing with like birthdays and those are more recent um, event. Even those are like a couple of days behind, but. Um, so in, why are you saying that? I'm sorry, I'm saying that because um, two weeks, <clears throat> two weeks after we draw the, or we filmed, I'm sorry. Two weeks after we filmed the, the pregnancy announcement where I was taking the pregnancy test. Mm -hmm. um, I started spotting and obviously that's not a good thing. Um, anyways, so obviously I called my um, OBGYN, um, the same place where I had Eliana, I was going to when I had Eliana. And they were booked out and they were like, well, we can't see you until like a week out. That's how busy they were. I'm like, I'm not waiting that long. <laughs> like, no, I need to see someone right now. <clears throat> so I called my initial midwife that I started out with when I had Ellie just to get her um, input. And she told me um, to go somewhere where I can go get a ultrasound. She comes to your homes and she does like birthing centers. So she doesn't have the necessary equipment needed to like um, look inside, but she can um, hear the heartbeat mm -hmm. with the Doppler, I think is what you call it. Took her advice, this, uh, this was Thursday and then Friday, I went ahead, um, went in and about around 10-ish, I went in and you know filled out some paperwork and got back there and we talked a bit. Uh, a bit. They were asking me questions, how do you feel? like? Cramping, yes, you know, all the normal, well, not all the normal. <laughs> um, like I was cramping, had bad cramps, cramps going around my belly, and obviously I, I spotted once and then I didn't spot again, so yeah, that was confusing. Um, so then, <clears throat> obviously they looked and um, they didn't say much, they didn't want to say much, but I knew something was up, because um, they were quiet and trying to just find any reason they can give me, to like to try and comfort me and I just yeah. kept saying just give it to me straight try and like, soften the blow or yeah temper what they're gonna say um <clears throat> anyway later we'll find out that it was they weren't um it's not in their scope of field to tell me if I'm having a miscarriage yeah, it let has me to explain that a little bit. yeah okay? yeah yeah go ahead so this is a not-for-profit mm -hmm. the place that we went for the ultrasound yeah and um, it was originally set up um, to help women uh, have an opportunity to see, you know, see the baby. Mm -hmm. it, it was like, you can get in, go in, and you're, the people that volunteer at this place are supposed to, what are the three things? Confirm pregnancy, mm -hmm. um, heartbeat, I don't know. It was just a couple, like something else. Base, like three basic, basic things. things. Yeah, yeah. And, and not any more than that. Yeah. And, and keep it very, very limited. Yeah. And so, what happened when she went in was they, they read things into the ultrasound that weren't even there and beyond their scope of what they're supposed to do. Okay. Hi, we might have interruptions once in a while. <laughs> Hi, Ellie. Thank you. Hello. Okay, well, mommy needs to talk to them, so can you turn around so we can all talk to them? Hey. Okay, so mommy and daddy are so anyway, I had to then wait for the doctor to confirm, um, uh, in fact, that I was having a miscarriage. The doctor from that? From then, yeah. <clears throat> so this was at 10-ish uh, a.m., around 10 a.m., and so the doctor didn't get to reading my ultrasound until um, 4.30, or whatever, and then I got a call back from one of the nurses um, confirming that I did have a miscarriage, but they and so then I asked, is it okay if I just have, let it happen naturally? Do I need to go in? Like, you know, is there an emergency? No, there's not an emergency. But you do have to follow up with your OBGYN. Mm -hmm. So then, 
yeah so then I did that called this again this was a Friday so there wasn't much I can do so I had to wait till Monday um, but luckily my midwife my first midwife with Ellie like, she has a relationship with my OB and had called her and said I want her to come in on Monday so then um, I didn't have to like call and book an appointment it was already kind of stated um, Monday I would call and then go in to see her on Tuesday mm -hmm. um, so no waiting which was nice so Ellie so Ellie's around so she'll be popping in and out of the frame yeah. um, sorry if it's a distraction but you know we still have That's to parent. yeah <laughs> So for this video, we've actually decided not to have the comments on, um, just because we don't we don't want to hear a lot of a lot of opinions or or comments. Now understand that our true you know what you know our true family, you guys that have subscribed and that really care about us, we know you care and we know that you're praying for us and um, this is nothing against you. So no. you know who you are. You most. The majority of, of the people who watch our channel have great things to say and encouragement. Yeah. Um, and and there will be a time that we'll open it up uh, in the future mm -hmm. uh, for you guys to speak into this part of our lives. But right now, it's still very tender. Yeah. And so while we would love to have the positive, the negative would hurt too much right at this time. Yeah. And so that's why we don't have comments on the video, just so you're aware. I just don't need a lot of opinions on on what to do or what happened or yeah, what the reason like, was or yeah, anything like that because just, yeah. just understand that we're we're going and speaking with several professionals and so we've already gotten their opinions yeah. and, and we we have an understanding of where Vin May's at. She knows her body and and so we're just not welcoming all kinds of input in those ways. Okay. It's nothing against those who really care about us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For sure. We just need a little silence. <coughs> you want on that. And sometimes it's a good thing. Yeah. In a very busy, loud world sometimes it is. But we don't ever want to shut you guys out of our lives, so that's why we're here and we wanted to let you know where we're at and let you guys know exactly where we're at. Yeah, I mean and it's okay if you you know, like Jory says, we know our true supporters are praying mm -hmm. and um Meanwhile, we'll say, you know, good thing, but like miscarriage, unless you've gone through it, it's a very sensitive topic. Uh, it's a very personal topic. And so, yes, we're YouTubers. We we put our lives out there. That's not even, that doesn't bother us. But it's that just because we're YouTubers, it doesn't give people permission to be unkind. Like, you know, I would... We will utilize every tool there is to make sure we don't see craziness. Like we don't have to put up with it just because right. we put our lives and our families. Right. And I think we're unique in that we yeah. actually dig into our comments <coughs> and yeah. respond to a lot of them. Yeah. And some YouTubers just don't because it's too much. It's, yeah, it's yeah. too much to know what everyone's thinking. It's yeah. easier not to know and just make content. Not care. Yeah. But we love the connection. We, you know, the human mm -hmm. connection is extremely. Um, we did tell our children, mm -hmm. if anyone's wondering. Um, yeah, we try not to hide. We weren't going to tell them initially. We, remember we, we said we're not going to. And then we're like, wait a minute, they're part of our family. Right, yeah. So we've, we've always tried to keep everything, like, at least honest with them. There's things we try to shield them from for their own sake. Yeah. But in terms of being honest, we're not going to lie to them. Yeah. And so um, we felt like it was uh, necessary for them, yeah, as members of the family, to understand that, you know, we had this opportunity for another member and it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when we thought the time was right, we shared it with them and they handled it pretty well. Yeah. I mean, it was hard for them, but Ellie, I mean, Ellie. Ellie doesn't. <laughs> Ellie <laughs> just knows it. mommy wasn't feeling good for yeah. you know couple of days but um Bella come here for a second we did tell the children and um we don't like to force our kids onto the camera we don't like to um tell them yes you have to say what's how you feel no mm -hmm. um but 
Bella. She was like, why are you dressed? I said, oh, we're gonna go film. And she was like, what are you filming? Like, I said, oh, I'm about to miss carriage. I'm about to miss carriage. Oh, okay. And uh, I said, and she goes, can I come? I said, like, what do you mean, can you come? She's like, well, you know, I don't mind talking and stuff. I said, oh, okay. Different show, we went outside and do tippy toes, then Bella did a beat noise, then I was too tired and I wanted to go inside because it's fun. But it's not cold because the warm inside, but I need to be warm. Okay, so then I just told her we can probably make a separate video uh, mm -hmm. if she wants to talk about it a little bit, her and mm -hmm. Jaden. So, um, yeah, is there anything you quickly want to say before Daddy and I finish it? Um, I mostly just came here to take Ellie, but I'm a little <laughs> sad, but um, it would have been nice to have another sibling, even yeah. though they're a handful. Yeah. Um, and you have me, but I have another sister. <laughs> <laughs> I have actually wanted it to be a boy. Okay. In, in terms of how we're doing, um, I mean, I think we definitely have some good days and some bad days. Yeah. Obviously, really hard for Ben to make. Um, there was, you know, some some other drama associated with everything that went on too that made it tough. Like we said. Yeah, I mean, we're just. I'm trusting God to, for me specifically, to like just see me through the season. Um, yeah. I mean, that's all I can do, right? <laughs> Um, so yeah, as where it stands today, where I am today right now, you know, um, I'm good. Yeah. I'm not saying definitely no, definitely yes, but as of now, it's a firm no. Yeah. Yeah. We could definitely be okay with the three we have. Yeah. Um, yep. it's a nice, it's a nice family, you know, mm -hmm. we have boys and girls, <laughs> boy and girls, boy and girl. Um, yeah. And yeah, Emily's wonderful. Yeah, obviously it would have been nice to have another one, but mm -hmm. I don't know. There's a you know, there's also pouring into the children we have, right, yeah, and yeah. you know, a lot of things that we want to do. Yeah. Um, and you can do it with children. You know, it's not that children stop you, but for us, the way we're thinking now is that we're okay. Mm -hmm. Three is good. So as far as uh, support system and people that were involved in uh, kind of being there for us, um, it was interesting to see, it's always interesting mm -hmm. to see when you go through something difficult where the support comes from. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it's from a very expected place. Uh, in this case, it, it was somewhat expected, but we, we received more support than, than we had expected, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so like some of our, actually some of the Amish people we know were the first ones to offer support in a very real tangible way, you know, uh, like uh, one of our friends offered, one of the May's friends that she goes to coffee with sometimes, she offered to come and be with our older children or yeah, with the children. So Ben and I could go to the appointments and uh, said, you know, anything you need, I'll come and help. Um, and so she was ready, you know, just to jump in and help us, which was really awesome. Yeah. Some people say they want to help, but you know she she was ready to. And she has she has children of her own. She has yeah. a family, and mm -hmm. this would have been like at eleven or something. This the current thing got really bad or whatever. Yeah, and we she were gonna like, have to run to the doctor. She was like, um, you know, Joy can come get me. I'm still with the children, so you guys can go. Right. That was just like one of those moments. Um, and she's like one of the. Only people, only friends I've ever had after every conversation, she tells me she loves me. Yeah. Um, the first time she did it, I was like, awkward. Right. And this is, and the uniqueness of yeah. that, of this whole thing with with our friend, I don't know if I should say her name or not. You can say her name. There so Jane, name. with her is like, she's Amish. She's part of the Amish community. Mm -hmm. And the Amish, um, they're not mean, they're very kind. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they intend to be standoffish, but because their lifestyle is so different mm -hmm. and they build community within the Amish, um, they're just not in contact with non-Amish people that yeah. much. 
and so for her to like go beyond her own cultural and community mm -hmm. sphere and and reach out and want to help uh, someone who's not Amish is just really a blessing you yeah know? and they most Amish live as Christians you know trying to follow the Bible and mm -hmm. so um, and so that's that's very you know parallel very co congruent with that belief that she would actually do that you know and yeah so outside their community it doesn't happen a lot uh, that I've seen yeah. so so and, that that was a blessing yeah um, you know yeah so like I said she's been a really good friend to me mm -hmm. um, I appreciate her always listening and, yeah. Um, yeah she actually used to work for me like helping taking care of Ellie and then when that season was over she she took care of Ellie so I can teach my older too so Ellie wasn't everywhere but when that season was over like we stayed in That was a surprising uh, person. And obviously, you know, one of my family members, um, you know, they asked what they could do. And I didn't really need much. I just needed them, you know, to pray because that, that's something that they're really strong at, I guess. Like, yeah, like, I just needed that comfort knowing that they would be praying. <laughs> so another um, couple that has offered support is a guy I worked with at a previous job uh, and we hit it off pretty well. We've had him over here and we've been to their house. Mm -hmm. Wait, have we had him over here? Not in this new house, but their old house. <laughs> oh, in the old house. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> but um, He so helped us move. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> in a big way. Yeah. Because he's a strong guy. <laughs> he's a big guy. Yeah, he's a big, strong man. Yeah. <laughs> So Drew and Julia, they've, they've also been here for us. Like when, when they found out about the miscarriage, uh, they offered to come and um, like bring a meal and just hang out. They had asked, what do you need? And Ben and I said, I don't know that we need anything material or physical, but yeah. just, you know, would love to have company. Uh -huh. And so she said, okay, we'll come spend time with you. And so that's really meaningful. Yeah. They're actually going to be coming. Yeah, and then um, I have another friend that is um, in South Carolina. Um, we actually have a phone date this Saturday um, to just come to catch up and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when you're going through something like that, you definitely just need to talk to people who've gone through similar right. experiences because they get it. Right. They, they'll get it, and so. Yeah, you don't need generic um, comments from no. people who don't understand. Um, yeah. yeah, and and I don't fault the people that haven't gone through sure, it for not just understanding. Trying. Just yeah, trying. because yeah. I was in that position once where a friend had it and I hadn't, and I said sorry, but I didn't understand the severity of what she was emotionally right. could have been going through, right. or even physically, the toll it takes on your body. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's it's nice knowing that I have people in my life that uh, I can speak to. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I think it's one of those moments where, uh, where if the body of believers, mm -hmm. we get all scriptural now, <laughs> is function. This is that time where if one part suffers, it's okay to go alongside them and and be there oh, in their suffering yeah. and sit with them. Uh, and we're not saying we need that necessarily. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say everybody, you know, feel sorry for us. <laughs> yeah, no. But uh, maybe just to give a little, a little feeling of what you could do if you don't know what to do mm -hmm. is just be there with them, mm -hmm. even if you don't say anything. Not saying anything usually is the best if you have not experienced it. Yeah. Like, don't. Um, say anything. <laughs> yeah. Don't. Don't. Don't try to put on a facade. Yeah. If you don't know how to act be honest about that but yeah just be there for them yeah yeah with them yeah um and then obviously the, the major thing for me was that um you know shout out to a couple of church members that 
We sometimes attend church too when we get there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But um we visit with them. Yes, I told you know one of the I told the pastor's wife and I don't know, there's some people you just like kind of feel connected to in life and she has that sweet spirit to me. Like so like I you know, I told her and then she brought along another um, woman, um, lady who's who's been there and, and they just prayed for me and I'm a firm believer in you know what the scripture says about if some of you are sick or if any of you are sick you know go to the elders let them anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith and you know things like that so I just asked for them to do that for me and they did and um, you know having people that sit there and cry with you it's just oh my gosh i i wasn't ex i wasn't expecting it but that's when you know like they understand they understand they like they get it but i told myself i'm not gonna cry oh, okay I'm moving not on going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so i know that that um Bename at one point had mentioned her nervousness about the pregnancy or mm -hmm. you know not wondering if or not knowing if wanting to have more you know, even when she found out she was pregnant, she was a little unsure. Mm -hmm. um, and and so there might be a thought that like, well, you know, you caused this because yeah. you didn't want this pregnancy. Yeah. And, and just understand that that's not the case, that God is sovereign. Mm -hmm. um, we think of like the story of Naomi when mm -hmm. she lost her husband and she lost her sons and she... She was like, I'm just going to go home. And when she got home, the people started saying, oh, Naomi's returned. She said, no, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara, which means bitter mm -hmm. in Hebrew, because the Lord has made my life bitter. Mm -hmm. And um, she she was speaking that her life was bitter. She was declaring, declaring my life is will bitter. be bitter. My yeah. life is, is bitter. bitter. This is my lot in life for the rest of my life. I will be bitter. And yet, yeah. God brought along a kinsman redeemer in her family that through Ruth gave her another son. It's interesting because when when Ruth has Obed by Boaz, the women in the village say, God has given Naomi a son. And you're like, well, wait a minute. Come on, you're skipping someone here. That boy was born to Ruth. But because uh, Boaz was a kinsman redeemer to Naomi's family, that was considered Naomi's son. And, uh, and in her line, carry on the line yeah. of her husband so um, even though Naomi believed her life was bitter and bad and spoke that over her life God was sovereign and had another plan and so just understand that we can't thwart God's plan we can't thwart his goodness in our lives and so if you've if you ever felt yeah. guilty about a miscarriage or something like this in your life, understand that um, if you had no intention of, you know, causing this miscarriage or you weren't like physically doing things to cause it, it's not your fault. No. You don't need to feel guilty about it. God is sovereign and he, he will be with you through it and your life won't end up bitter. Just keep your eyes on him. And like, I, I like that this, the story of uh, Naomi and how God's goodness towards her was um, it always like helps me to remember that God gave us emotions. He gave us feelings. He created us yeah. this way. Mm -hmm. So he does not like overlook the emotions we have when right. we're facing like something dr traumatic or like upsetting or saddening. Like he doesn't want you to not like express those emotions. Right. That's right. why they're there. Um, but there's been this tendency of like, don't speak that over your life, right. don't say that. And it's just like, right. but I'm not gonna deny the emotions that the creator th saw it fit mm -hmm. to give me um, to be able to go through this life. Mm -hmm. And that is, yeah, I'm sad and yes, I'm angry. Yes, I'm I'm shocked and, you know, in dismay, whatever. Um, whatever emotion you've had going through a tough time, whether it be a miscarriage, mm -hmm. um, uh, loss of relationships, whatever it is, God knows us. That's how well He knows us. They're in distress right now. They're just venting, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's an he gives us this example because he still blesses right. um, uh, Naomi, and that's where our Messiah, that's the line our Messiah was, you know, came through. Right. So it puts us in our place in a way because yeah. we, we we're humans. If we're placing <laughs> uh, so much emphasis on what we say or mm -hmm. or show in terms of feelings, then we're putting we're putting the power back on us. Yeah. And we, we don't have the power to create those things God does yeah. and so you know having strong emotion is not an, in an opposite place to faith it's not an opposition to faith just right. because you have real hurt and pain and sorrow and feelings of anger over your situation it doesn't mean you're opposing the faith that you might have right. and, and God is not so small and you know emotionally unstable that he can't handle still loves you and still has a plan for you and in spite of where you find yourself he's still working in your life um you know although we're deciding for now not to have any not to try for any my doctor did reassure me um, when i went in for checkups and all that stuff that um, from her standpoint to OBGYN, she doesn't see any reason why i couldn't, couldn't try. try again or can see yeah um, so every so like um, that's reassuring and yeah. She's been she's been a blessing too being able to go to that doctor. Mm -hmm. um, she's started her own practice recently and um, she's clarified a lot of things that we were confused on <laughs> yeah. from other things. So yeah. that's been good. Yeah. So we had found we had found out um, about the miscarriage at around nine weeks. Which, yeah. I was going into my nine weeks, but the measurements, um, the sac was only measuring like five weeks. Five to six. Five to six weeks. Yeah. Okay. What have I learned or what have you learned during this tumultuous, eventful, um, heartache? Um, for me personally, like I, I never knew how much a woman goes through. Like, I I knew, but I don't think I knew. I don't think I understand the amount of changes a woman faced in her hormones during monthly times. There's menopause during, you know, childbearing. Like, that is a lot. And I never stop to think, like, you do a lot. Right woman you go through a lot yeah. not to say that men don't have their own things they have to work through i'm talking about on a consistent basis a woman goes through a lot yeah your body's constantly changing, changing. and adapting and, and i yeah. you know, i made a joke to jane and jory that well it wasn't a joke but i it was like a question a wonder it's like i wonder if that's what that scripture means in the bible when it says men or husbands live with your wives with understanding mm -hmm. is because y'all the love the amount of hormones that are shifting and changing a lot <laughs> so what i've learned is to to be kind to myself mm -hmm. and to have patience with myself like i've just gone through something hard not just mentally but physically um it's exhausting um to give myself time to heal and not to push myself, because I attempt to do that, just kind of get over it, let's go. Um, that I have, I have to be okay to take my time, be kind to myself. Oh, I don't feel right yet. Okay, you just went through this. Take your time. It's gonna take time for your body to return to what it was. So that was my big takeaway. Is that as a woman. like we're we keep coming back to like all right we're gonna, we're gonna tell them about this you know we're gonna be honest about this <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you're learning us more and more mm -hmm. and uh, we appreciate the fact that 
keep getting to know us and you keep you know, coming back to see us then and it's good to have our dear friends with us so keep looking up <laughs> that's right keep looking up keep looking